Welcome to the review of April of Works. You know, each time when I need to gather all my finished works on the last day of the month, I think that there will be so small amount of pictures which I will be showing you. And then when I start to gather the books, I usually are quite surprised by the amount of finished works because I can totally forget about pictures which I started to do in the beginning of the month. So it's even good for myself to have a look back at the whole April. And my April started from Botanicum book. For the Easter I selected page with bunny, this one. I always loved the main image here, but as usual I wasn't very happy by the empty background. This time I decided to continue my experiments with Derwent Graffiti. As usual, as a second set I used Aqua Blend pencils. They are not bad watercolor pencils and in my set there is a good range of greens and they helped me to create more or less decent green background. Nothing special, but for the spring picture I think that it worked quite well. I also tried to get rid of the black lines on the flowers, leaves and on the bunny, so in the end I'm pretty happy how it looks. Maybe the eggs and they are slightly out of picture, but I wanted them to be the focal point to show that it's dedicated to Easter, so they look a little bit cartoonish. All other elements I do love and I love that I added some additional tiny flowers to the grass. I think that in such a way as a whole botanical composition it looks more realistic. So now I have this very cute bunny. The other page also was about animals. You know my goal to do at least one page in this book each month. I hope that one day I will be able to finish it. And April was about sugar gliders. I always found these creatures absolutely adorable. They are small, they are cute, they have beautiful fur. And I'm even subscribed to a couple of Instagram profiles dedicated to sugar gliders, wombat and other very interesting Australian and New Zealand uh, animals, uh, uh, nature. So it was very interesting and very instructive for me. I do love how the sugar glider itself look. I combined various grey colors. You know, when you do completely grey animal, it's good when you have various shades of grey. So, French grey, warm grey, cool grey, they are very helpful. And as usual, I prefer to combine softer pencils on the first layer and then if I want to do texture of the fur, if I want to draw individual hairs, then I switch to harder pencils like polychromoses and I do second layer. My biggest problem here was that I started to do flowers with my Star Joy pencils, which I do love actually, but on this thin paper they wasn't the best choice. They have colors which I wanted for these flowers. They are also very interesting, lace bar, courageon, but they didn't want to give their pigment on this paper, so in the end I had to switch to polychromoses and I even used markers here to increase brightness of flowers. So it will be a good experience for me as that Star Joy, they are better in Maria Trolle books, in Hannah Carlson books, and for this thin paper they are not the best choice. But and I'm quite pleased by the look of this page, even if the background is very simplified, I added a little bit of pencils, a little bit of pastel green gouache paint, just to indicate some background behind and to not leave it completely white. I can call April the month of Marty Noble. 
Not only because I did a one page in Goddesses, but also because I started this mythical mermaid. Yeah, I maintain my promise to trying to start new books and in April I started actually two new books. It wasn't very helpful because I purchased five new, but anyway, I am trying. Let's start from Goddesses. And this time I selected Goddess from Egypt mythology. I simply decided that I want to finish the spread. You can see that colors are quite similar, but if on the left page, which I did several months ago, I used paint, then I used prisma colors and polychromosis for the main image. Here my main medium choice was uh, Sue Color. And so color pencils behave quite well. I was pretty happy how they mix it, how they covered the paper. They didn't damage the page on the back because I tend to press too hard if pencils are hard and on the double side books it's not very good. But here the colors behaved really well. I also added a couple of polychromoses because they also are very good on this paper and at the same time quite happy how it looks. It was challenging to stay in the colors which for me are traditional for Egypt, for their architecture, for their jewelry which inspired me for this color on the wings. But I think that I managed to do it. I especially love this frame which a little bit reminds me about uh, old gold with gemstones inside and of course her wings is my favorite part of this page. And in Mermaids I even do two pages. As my first project I selected Mermaid from Carib Caribbean Islands. Here she is. As I said, so colors behave really good on this paper, so here I also use them. I will only added a couple of pencils from a Black Widow dark skin tone set for her skin. I wanted to make her darker than my usual fair skin tone. And on the water I added a little bit of paint and a little bit of polychromosis. Well, I think that she is not bad, even I am not sure in the shape of her tail. For me, it's something wrong with her tail, but colors are not bad. And I was quite pleased that I started this book. I enjoyed the color long, coloring process. They decided to do the second page, but in completely different color palette. This time I selected this mermaid from Poland. If you visited Warsaw, you probably saw the monument dedicated to this mermaid. She is a protector of the city. And I do love the story. And I especially wanted to try doing this storm sky. Again, the color pencils were very helpful. I don't know if on the screen it's visible, but color is a very pleasant gray uh, violet, I would say, so interesting color and I will remember for myself that so color they have such nice pencils for the storm sky. For some of the areas I also used uh, polychromoses, for example, also on the storm waves on the river. And I think that she also looks nice. I wasn't sure in the color of her tail, but then I thought that Everything on the page has muted dark colors, so to have something nice, in um, something bright in the center, it could be nice and it will create some good balance on the page. And I think that she herself is quite pretty. Nice drawing by Marty Noble. I do love faces of her mermaids. Of course, in May I also will be participating in Mermay. You probably know this famous challenge when artists or colorists they dedicate their art to mermaid. Last May I managed to color several pictures about mermaids. I do love mermaids because it's a big 
field for the fantasy you can select any colors for the skin for the hair for the tails so it's good for your imagination and your creativity and from the last may i gathered a lot of new books about mermaids so of course in may i hope that you will see some new mermaid portraits for me from me and I think that Mer Mythical Mermaids also will be one of the books which I will be using in May. Another fantasy book which I used in April was this huge fantasy collection by Jade Summer and somehow I still continue to color in the fairy part of the book. Maybe it's because I enjoy experimenting here with various mediums. Here again I started with alcohol-based markers to quickly do the deep blue background and blue uh, gray trees around the uh, fairy. Then I did grass in similar color. After that I switched to pencils. I used su colors, I used polychromoses. Again, su colors were quite helpful for so they are good on this paper, at least for me. I added brighter accents on the flowers, on the deep, on the grass. Then I also used paints when I wanted to get rid of the black lines, when I wanted to add some sparkles, some color accents. Well, I think that because I, many pictures of this book, they are similar one to another. You feel free to experiment, you, you are not afraid that the page after your experiments it will be uh, messed up. I don't care because I can go to the next page and it will be almost the same and I can continue. But it helps me to uh, learn better my alcohol-based markers. I'm so lazy that I even hadn't done yet the full swatch of all my colors, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me to find the good uh, combo of light mid-tone and dark tone, so when I color I try to memorize for myself such color combos. And it helps me to understand better my pencils when I am also free to select colors as usual paper. It buckled a little bit, but I think that markers actually are one of the best ways here to do the background if you don't want to spend huge amount of time of covering everything with pencils. So I appreciate that markers really help to make pictures quicker. Next, let's move to the small projects which I did. I decided that I wanted to finish the spread which I started last month. It's actually almost the last page in the Oz book. Previously I did the right side. I did it with watercolors and then with sub-color pencils for the highlights, for the details. And exactly in the same way and even with the same colors I proceeded on the left side. For the uh, name of the Kansas state, I selected the same colors which I used on the flowers and I think that I used the same watercolors for the landscape behind. It's a very simple and maybe the most time-consuming part was to get rid of the sun black lines on the sky, on the clouds. Quick way, but I, quick work, but I am happy that I finished to do the spread. And for me to color landscapes in this book, it's very relaxing when you do first layer with watercolor and then only on the areas where you want to intensify color or to increase shadows, to add additional color accents, you work with pencils. So it's a good way to proceed coloring in these small books. But when I started to work in Escape to Wonderland, not everything went so well. Maybe let me show you closer. <laughs> you know that I started to color from the back page. 
so I slowly moving and this time I selected this a very cute white rabbit and I wanted to continue my experiments with Derwent graffiti and pencils. In previous months I already used Derwent graffiti for creating gray, gray blue uh, and gray green backgrounds and this time I decided that it's time to try their uh, brown red range of colors. I combined one gray and couple of those rust uh, autumn leaves, something like these pencils. But the problem is that when I started to apply water, there were dots appearing on the paper. So my previous uh, Previous thoughts that paper in this book is slightly different. It's second edition and all my other books they are first edition. And indeed paper is slightly different. Because in all my first books I never had problems with paper when I used watercolors or ink tents. I already started to have small problems with dots appearing after watercolor dried here, so I had to cover it with second layer sprinkling paint on top and here was the similar problem and again i had to turn this fold of the paper into part of the background ornament i again sprinkled pigment from the pencil on the paper to mask those dark dots and now i have this interesting background i also grabbed one of the gold markers or gold uh, pens and I added a vertical golden lines in the corners. I hope that you can see them. I do love this uh, faded vintage look of the background. That's exactly what I wanted from Derwent graffiti and pencils. So apart from small problems with paper, I am pleased with the look of this background. Maybe it looks a little bit dirty, a little, a little bit faded, but as I said, that's what I wanted. I wanted to learn how to do such look. And then I decided that it will be a nice contrast to do the rabbit with quite bright colors. And there is also a difference in textures. Graffitins, they created a matte surface. It's like even a little bit chalky to look at. And so colors, they are wax based pencils. So the surface is a little bit waxy and shining. So the rabbit definitely stood up against the background colors. I wasn't sure what exactly there is behind of the rabbit, so I turned into some kind of the carved wall part. I don't know, but at least it doesn't distract attention from the figure of the rabbit. Maybe it's not totally white, but I tried to use first light gray colors and then to outline him to add some full texture with a white Posca. I am quite pleased with both my small projects. They are quick to do and I enjoy them as much as I do my full-size projects. Speaking about full-size projects, I started to color again in vaults and within vaults by Kirby Rosanas and somehow I decided to do two huge spreads and both of them are dedicated to underwater realms so it was a little bit strange and the whole month I struggled how to do this two very detailed spreads and how not to repeat colors. The page which I finished is this one. I hope you can see how detailed is this one. It was fun to do the layer with water and with old columns, with the stones, but then when I started to do the upper part with all those arches, corals, seaweeds, various creatures from fantasy creatures to more realistic fishes, turtles, then it was quite time consuming, but I enjoyed it. As usual, my favorite medium for this book 
uh, uh, polychromos pencils for me they are the best for covering paper and edition which I am talking about it's plume so maybe your experience is slightly different because there are many editions of this book but my favorite medium so far is a polychromos pencils but here, because of the many pastel colors which I wanted to use, I also mixed them with polychromoses. In the end, I think that this page has its my usual faults, that I probably used too many colors on the upper part of the page. Maybe I had to use smaller amount of colors on the arches and to reserve all my bright colors for the fishes, but it was so interesting to color all the elements, all the um, um, stones, seashells, um, seaweeds attached to the columns, so maybe I was a little bit carried away. In the end I think that I do love the spread and of course I am proud of myself that I managed to finish it. The second spread is also about underwater world, but you can see that I definitely tried to use totally different colors. This one is unfinished yet, so I will continue to work on it in May, because I needed some break after I finished the first spread. I had to reload my mind and to get some fresh ideas how to finish the rest of the page. Now I think that I am ready to proceed and to finally finish it. For now I am quite happy with the progress here. I was careful that all the main characters like octopus, like this... Okay, I forgot how to call them. The whales, of course, the whales. <laughs> All fishes, big corals, that they would be standing against the color of the background, that they would pop up. The, all the seaweeds and corals I tried to color in a very limited color palette, all adding only small amount of bright colors here and there on the corals, because I also need something to attract attention to the architectural elements of various castles which will be my next step and then I will have to decide how to connect this image together with the world, with the part with the text. Usually I am not a huge fan of coloring pictures where is words, text, something like this, but here I think that it will be totally possible to cover it slightly with blue colors, turquoise colors, which would represent water and in such a way to um, reintegrate the image and the text. So this will be part of my, my um, working plan. Here I combined polychromoses, but also um, Black Widow Monarch pencils and also Arteza, which has nice green colors. So here it's a big mix of brands, because I really tried to use totally different colors from the first page. Another project which I started but hadn't finished yet was in the newest book by Johanna Basford. And this time I decided that I want to do this a very sweet cakes. They are cute, they are quick to do and it's interesting to practice which colors to combine for the cream, for the chocolate, for the uh, cake decoration. So slowly but steadily I managed to do eight of them. I think that in May I will finish to do the rest for for now it was indeed uh, quite fun and it helped me with my other colorings. I will show you uh, later. On the next page 
from Mysteria by Anastasia Calder 1. I continued my experiments with Derwent Graffiti and in this book paper also didn't want to behave together with Derwent Graffiti. They created not very good stains. They have perfect colors for my initial idea. Their juniper, their uh, violet storm colors, they are really good for this kind of background. That's why I selected them. I wanted their muted colors to create nice contrast to the similar but brighter colors which I would use for the portrait. But they didn't spread it well on the paper, so I had to cover background made with graffitins with a little bit of second layer with regular pencils, then I added pigment directly from the pencil core of graffitins to intensify color. So in the end I think that I managed to save the final look of the page and it turned almost like I wanted it, but the process wasn't uh, very easy. The only thing where I have some doubts it's the color of her dress. I wanted to stay in a limited color palette, so my choice of blue-violet, violet was logical, but maybe it wasn't the best, because for now dress attracts a lot of attention, and of course I would prefer that her blue eyes would be the focal point here. I wanted her to be quite pale, and I managed to do it. But honestly, the easiest part for me was to do the raven. That's where I definitely enjoyed myself. I hope that you can see that apart from black and gray, it has some yellowish tint on the feathers on the chest and some blue-green accents on the black feathers. So that's where my favorite part, because for me it's much easier to color bird comparing to portrait. But in the end now I enjoy looking at her face and apart from the dress everything else I think that it's good. Another project where I struggled a lot was in Villain Sun and once more I realized why I prefer to start from the background. Usually, when I am full of hopes regarding the new picture, full of inspiration, it's easier to do the background. The time-consuming part, more intimidating part, it's easier for me to do on the first step. And if you like the background, then the main image you will do very quickly. But on the image which I did on April, I went in, the, in another order. And first I did the dragon, because I really like, love this image. And from the very beginning I had very strong idea about which colors I want to use for the dragon, for the skin, for the architectural elements. So I colored him quite quickly. And then started the problem of the background. I have Croatian edition where I don't want to use water-based mediums. If it, if, we, if it would be Dutch edition one-sided, I would definitely use watercolors. I didn't want to use soft pastels because I think that it would create not bright enough background, maybe not too intense for this page. So I started to do it with pencils. Definitely not my favorite way of filling in the big area of the sky when you need to draw clouds by yourself. So even now I'm not sure in the final look of it. Maybe after a couple of days when again I will refresh my minds, when I will reload my minds, I will return to this page and I think about adding a little bit of a white paint on the upper parts of the clouds to add more contrast and more white areas on the sky. But the dragon, I do love him. Apart from the background, I'm quite proud of this page. He is detailed and it was interesting to connect part with the castle with the part of, of his body. Again, you can see that I managed to stay in a relatively limited color palette. 
So anything on the dragon I do love. In the background it's not that bad. It's simple. It's doesn't dis it doesn't distract attention from the dragon, which is good. It's simply not very interesting to look at. But maybe, as I said, white paint can help me. And by adding some white areas, it will help more. Co it will have more contrast, and it will be more interesting to look at. But the dragon, he is good, and I am proud how it turned out. But next time I definitely will be starting only from the background. Now let's move to romantic country. In April I finally purchased the second book. Now I own first and second. And of course I wanted to start coloring in the second tale book immediately. In my opinion second and third books they are much more interesting much more detailed comparing to the first one so i was quite happy that i managed to get at least the second book as my first project i selected this tree house first i thought that it would be it will be very quick coloring i don't know why i decided in such way but instead I think that I filmed four parts of this color long and all of them they were pretty long because of the so many things which are inside of the tree house. I started here from the tree. I think that it's important part of the page. I worked on all the wooden textures which we have on the uh, roof, in the corners of the walls. It was interesting to do all the plants here. Some of them I did in more realistic colors. Some of them I tried to turn into magical plants stored here in the jars. But my biggest problem here was the choice of color for the walls. First I selected a very uh, light gray for the walls and light blue for the sky and colors were quite similar. Only after I increased darkness on the walls and I used brighter blue on the more intense blue on the sky. Now at least we, we can see where are the walls of the tree house and where is the sky. I also wanted to improve this tree behind because on the original drawing I wasn't very happy with the shape of it, but I didn't. I wasn't very successful. I managed to add a couple of leaves to make it more full, but still I'm not very happy how it looks. But the central tree trunk and all elements on the right side here, I love them. And I think that it was a good beginning. I definitely enjoyed doing this first page and now I try to select which it will be my next projects from this gorgeous book. Here in the first tale I have page which I finished only yesterday. So it's my last finished project so far. And this time I selected Pauline's Bakery. I just need to find it as usual. I hadn't put a mark here. I have the Pauline's, Pauline's Bakery, I believe it's called. And that's where the second name of this page is 50 Shades of Bread. Because I really tried to color all different varieties of breads in slightly different way. And the experience which I got when I colored cakes by Johanna Basford, it was also very helpful here. Previously I did several pages with various baked goods in Teresa Goodrich I colored bakery, so I gathered all my experience and I put it into this page trying to do the various colors of the bread. And I think that it looks good. I don't know why I selected almost the same color for the counter here, but Maybe it's not that bad. At least I have some several bright points. I deliberately made this 
tablecloths, napkins in a very bright colors. I added a couple of bright elements on the um, cupcakes, on the croissants. So I do love this page. It was fun to combine Prismacolor pencils in such a way that each of the breads would be slightly different. And Posca pens also were very helpful. I think that I spent almost the whole ivory Posca on this page, but the result definitely was worth it. I'm glad that slowly, step by step, I add at least one page a month to my romantic country books. And I don't know about May, because I want to concentrate more on mermaids, but maybe at least one other page I will try to do. Next, it will be book by Hannah Carson. And I want to represent you, uh, my vampire, in her very vam vampire girl with her very vampire cat. I think that both of them I managed to do quite nice. Of course, I struggled with masking some of the dots on the face and I want her to be with very pale skin because she is a vampire and it was challenging to do a white hair and more challenging was to show it on the video. Maybe now you can see that the, her hair they have some grey and pale yellow highlights. With the crown and with the cat it was much easier. But in the end I am quite proud of this work. Somehow it's quite easy for me to work in this book by Hannah Carson, so of course I am patiently waiting for the release of the second book. I don't know how to pronounce this fetish name in English edition, which I think will be in August. And of course I am dying to see the third book, which Hannah promised in this series, so I think that this... I definitely want to have all of them in my collection. It's one of the books which I can color from the beginning to the end, even if I wouldn't have any other books, if I would somehow lost all of them. What a horror thought. Then I will be quite happy to do pictures in this one. They have nice size. I really appreciate size. I appreciate paper and I do love a variety of subjects. I don't know about me. I already have a couple of pictures in mind from this book for me. It will depend from my free time. Now let's let's move to the final books. And of course, of course I colored in the books by Teresa Kudrich. In April I continued to select spring subjects. So in country charm I thought that the page <laughs> as usual. I know, I know, I know. Sorry guys. Yeah. I did this page with garden shed because for me it's like a start of gardening season. We can have tulips here and we can definitely see that the gardener started to prepare seeds to put them in to put them into flower pots. So for me it's a good a picture for the beginning of the spring, beginning of the garden season. Everything is made with Prisma colors and of course with Posca pens. Posca are very helpful here. Nothing to say about this page. I'm happy with all the elements. I tried to show that weather is sunny, so I added a little bit of yellow here and there. I wanted to show that the color of the wooden desk on the walls, they are faded, that's why I selected not very bright colors to cover them. And in the end, of course, I enjoyed doing all those flowers to invent which colors I want to use for each of the bouquets. So, I'm glad that I did it. But the page in the spring scenes is definitely my favorite. I wanted 
to do this page from the very beginning when I just got the book. But I am glad that I waited for a year to finally start and finish it because now I feel much more confident and I think that a result which I got in April is much better to the probable result which I could got a year ago. So that's my windmill, my spring windmill surrounded by lots of tulips, daffodils, I even added some magnolia trees in bloom and I am quite proud of all areas here, starting from the fall front, from all the tulips and daffodils, moving to the central part where I added some flower fields behind the windmill, and then moving to the windmill itself where I tried to add texture and shadows and lights on her wings on the main building, on the uh, brick part of the base of the windmill, so I enjoyed it a lot. The only thing which I think that I forget to do, maybe to cover top parts of the trees with a very pale green to show more that the top parts of the trees, they are highlighted by the sun. But even now I am quite proud of this page. I am glad that I still have one month left of spring, so I definitely will be doing more in this book. That was my May. I also have a couple of started projects, but there I only started to select colors, so I will be showing them in the next review. I also had prepared a couple of videos about my plans for the mermaid and I hope that you will help me to select which mermaids to color, because I have big amount of mermaid books and I won't be able, won't be capable to color in all of them, so I need to select the best. I thank you for watching, I hope that your spring is really good or if you are living somewhere in Australia that your autumn is quite mild and pleasant. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you very soon in my next videos.